Oh, my goodness. Across Britain, there's been a rise in extreme oh, and God. specialist cleaners. Is that? <laughs> is that? Prepared to take on anything. That's horrific. I've never been sick on the job. And everything. Oh. Look what's in here! Oh, I feel sick. From dead body cleanups and hoarders. It's to the ceiling. To potentially toxic levels of bacteria. This is about as bad as it gets. Oh. oh my God! Look at this! Wow! Britain's extreme cleaners are on call 24 hours a day. We are the fourth emergency service. I have cleaned this place to an inch of its life. Transforming homes. Wow! And lives. Oh my goodness! It's more than just cleaning; it's caring. I can't believe it. My face in human nature has gone up. There. When people are in need, we are their saviors. It's time for Britain to call the cleaners. Around six and a half million people in the UK are caring for someone who is too ill or elderly to look after themselves. When people struggle to look after their homes, extreme cleaners can be a lifeline. Like Maxine and daughter Jasmine. You want ice cream? No. Thank you very there much. There you go, ice cream for you. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Today, Maxine has been called to Luton by a young chap who has a cleaning crisis. Hi, Maxine. Hi, Hi, Hi you right? Nice to meet bad. you. How are you? Not How are bad. you? Come in. 22-year-old Christian lives with his mum in their two-bed flat. Mum Joy suffers from a form of arthritis uh, and is in constant pain. Uh, you want your shampoos in there, don't you, Mum? Yeah, shampoo, conditioner. Condition, bloody uh, wash. Christian has been her full-time carer since he was a young boy. I'd say about 15 years ago, Mum's health started decreasing more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she started getting more ill as the time went by. Mm -hmm. She could do less and less and less. Mm -hmm. I was a lazy teenager, as you can see. I haven't cleaned up a lot of this house. Looking after a sick parent as well takes up a lot of your time. I have to help mum in and out of the bath because I can't do a lot for herself. So you were the carer? So I've, I've, the carer. I've always been a carer for mum. Right, this is the fun room. Okay. Slash mum, obviously, slash mum's bedroom as well. There's a lot more junk in here than there is in other rooms. DVD collection and that, clothes everywhere. Just chuck away, there's no need keeping it. OK. Joy's bedroom got into such a bad condition that Christian moved her bed into the lounge, where she now spends nearly all her time. It's not very nice, a lot of cobwebs around. Does Mum want to come back in here? No. I think Mum wants to stay where she is. OK. And then we're going to turn this into a living room or maybe a room for my little girl when she's a bit older, when she stays oh, with Nanny and things. Oh, yes. How long have you been here? 20 years. Oh, I was a year old when I came <laughs> here. So I've lived here all my life. So yeah, yeah. That's why I want the flat done out of the way. And oh. it's, it's easy, because I'm older now, so I need to move out and. I don't want to leave Mum in a crappy place to live in. Push down. That's it. Push. She's just a caring and loving woman. And, you know, she deserves the best, and I'm going to try and give her the best. But my main goal for the clean house is to paint it, refurbish it, and keep it that way. We're about to have family dinners around my house again, have Christmas around my house, have birthday dinners, and just enjoy it the way it should be, not having to worry about people coming in your home and it being a mess. Okay. Christian and his mum are vacating the flat for three days. One foot in front of the other, mum. One foot in front of the other. With them out of the way, Maxine and Jasmine can get stuck in, tackling the two decades' worth of dust and grime. I get excited. Wash, wash up quite nicely, ready for painting. I'm just glad to be here to change someone's life. The most challenging part of, of my job is when the client is present on the job, you can hardly get things done. The client is present and you chuck things out and they go and bring it straight back. Yeah, sometimes what really frustrates me is, you know, there's that one little bit where 
You've scrubbed the life out of it and it's just not going anywhere. <laughs> it's really difficult sometimes to actually make people see that they need help and they need us to come in. And a lot of the time as well as old people, they don't want to admit that they can't look after their home anymore. And that's sad and, mm. and quite heartbreaking, but they need... We know it, they need yeah, help and, and we've got to do something for them. We may find it frustrating because we're having to talk our way in to be able to clean their homes. So let yeah, them it's understand. Tough times. It's been estimated that Britons have £5.7 billion worth of unused household items stashed away in their homes. Extreme cleaners are often called in when clutter tips over into hoarding. Like sisters Yvonne and Angela. Oh, all these joyous things to look forward to now I'm getting older. I don't want to get old. I don't look that old, do me. <laughs> <laughs> They are deep cleaning experts who've been in the business for nearly two decades. From a young age, Ange, I just think we were de destined to go yeah. into the cleaning trade. I'll never forget cleaning a friend from school's house yeah. because we, we were 13. Yeah, we were really young and we didn't like the house, thought it was dirty, so we spent <laughs> the whole day cleaning it while they were out. Today's job brings them to Kent. Hello, Hello. John. I'm Yvonne. Hi. Pleased to How meet you, sweetheart. And this is my sister. I'm Angela. 66-year-old John has lived in his one-bed house for over 40 years. He buys in bulk and can't stand to see anything wasted. Slight step over there. Wow, we have but got a lot of stuff in here. <gasps> a lot of what's in here is new. I can see seven boxes of Christmas lights there. All these Christmas lights mm. are going incredibly cheap and they will be nice for somebody that wouldn't otherwise have them. So have you been buying these Christmas, for other people, have you? These is are that... to give away. There's a few new things here, which I thought would make my life a little easier, but I've got nowhere to take no, them out of the boxes. Them, yeah. There's the grill. Teppanyaki grill. That's a paella pan. That's going to be yeah. fantastic. But the waffle cone maker and my steam cleaners. Two of. Two of, yes. <laughs> it was buy one, get the second half price, so I just couldn't resist. It and was it's a such a, such a useful thing to have. We have a look in the kitchen. It's a kitchen diner, actually. Wow. Hidden amongst the belongings are two cookers, two washing machines, three kettles, and for some reason, 50 cans of sardines. You like sardines? No! <laughs> They are the healthy option. And to navigate your way to John's bathroom means taking your life into your own hands. Just going to get over the assault course. <laughs> Take that box off. No, uh, well, not for the moment. No way. Well, I can take your weight. Would you like an arm? OK, darling. I cannot move, literally. I'm scared to touch anything in case it falls on me. Most likely it would. Oh, God. We've got it. As a child, John was raised in post-war Britain, where possessions were scarce. Back in those days, we'd just come out of rationing. There wasn't much of anything about. Even a piece of string would be saved. Because where do you get a ball of string? That was just the mentality of the day. Things were precious in those days. I think I'm back in that mindset. Yvonne and Angela will try to tackle the clutter, but John is insisting on signing off on every item they want to discard. Bits of wood, John. Can this go on the skip? Uh, no, that's got use. So I've collected that. They're a bit yeah. mouldy, so I'm going to throw them. No, they're going in the car. They'll be used for cooking. John, this is actually missing. A wing. It's in there. A the wing. wing is there. So has this got to stay? For the moment. Just for the moment. That's a lost property bag. I didn't know we had a lost property pile. Well, we have now. Are you keeping your aquarium? Oh, absolutely, yes. OK. I'm going to put a plastic crocodile in there. Ah, oh, more lost property. This is how we feel today. This is how we feel. <laughs> but under here, we're going to do what we can. Yvonne and Angela have just three days to clear three tons of clutter and make the house livable again. But with John overseeing it, it could be a challenge. Yeah. 
It is estimated that hoarding is a problem that can affect up to one and a half million people in the UK. When sufferers reach out for help, it is often extreme cleaners who are called in. Every time you uncover something, you find more. It's never ending. Yvonne and Angela are in Kent, struggling to clear hoarder John's home. Not only is this a hoarding house, John likes to buy one, get one free. And there's numerous buy one, get one frees. So far, they've only taken six bags out of the house, and very little of that has gone into the skip. You want to keep that part? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Somebody will be pleased with it. Ah. I haven't got room for it, but I don't want to lose it. Is that the lampshade? That was it, yes. It's broken. But it's only broken on one side. You still want it? I think so, for now. Empty box. Can I please take to the skip? Uh, no, I want the box. I've got things to put in the box. April 2003, Daily Mail. That must be some kind of commemorative thing. Yeah, head. It's not even been opened. Looks like crisp, but you open it and a huge spring pops out. That's got place in my life. That will do for cleaning the draining board. We need that. That was a waste of money, that skip, wasn't it? No, we're getting there. We're not. We've not finished yet. What I'm worried about is... Yeah. ..the gazebo, the John pile, <laughs> is massive. There's more keeping than anything else, John. At the uh, well, can you just trust me a little? It's becoming clear just how hard it is for John to throw items away. So Yvonne and Angela have to change tack. Hmm. We have established in the last hour that John is not going to let us throw, throw anything, anything. Mm. I am worried right. about his stress levels. Everything we take out, I can see him getting agitated. We know we can't throw anything. We know that. No so to put can anything. we try and make an organised environment of everything that's in well, here? That's the only thing we can try and do. And make it a tidy pile of possessions. I want to make the time that we've got here work a little bit. We won't. Oh, my goodness. Across Britain, there's been a rise in extreme oh, oh and God. specialist cleaners. Where's that? That? <laughs> Prepared to take on anything. That's horrific. I've never been sick on the job. And everything. Oh. Look what's in here! Oh, I feel sick. From dead body cleanups and hoarders. It's to the ceiling. To potentially toxic levels of bacteria. This is about as bad as it gets. Oh, oh my God. Look at this. Wow. Britain's extreme cleaners are on call 24 hours a day. We are the fourth emergency service. I have cleaned this place to an inch of its life. Transforming homes. Wow! And lives. Oh, my goodness. It's more than just cleaning, it's caring. I can't believe it. My face in human nature has gone up there. When people are in need, we are their saviours. It's time for Britain to call the cleaners. Around six and a half million people in the UK are caring for someone who is too ill or elderly to look after themselves. When people struggle to look after their homes, extreme cleaners can be a lifeline. Like Maxine and daughter Jasmine. You want ice cream? No. Ah! Thank you very there much. There you go, ice cream for you. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Today, Maxine has been called to Luton by a young chap who has a cleaning crisis. Hi, Maxine. Hey, how are you? Right? Nice to meet you. Back. How are you? Not how are bad. you? Come in. 22-year-old Christian lives with his mum in their two-bed flat. Mum Joy suffers from a form of arthritis uh, and is in constant pain. Uh, you want your shampoos in that, don't you, Mum? Yeah, shampoo, conditioner. Conditioner, bloody wash. 
Christian has been her full-time carer since he was a young boy. I'd say about 15 years ago, mum's health started decreasing more and more and more. Obviously, she started getting more ill as the time went by. Mm -hmm. She could do less and less and less. Mm -hmm. I was a lazy teenager, as you can see. I haven't cleaned up a lot of this house. Looking after a sick parent as well takes up a lot of your time. I have to help mum in and out of the bath because I can't do a lot for herself. So you were the carer? So I've, 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 I've always been a carer for mum. Right, this is the front room. Okay. Slash mum, obviously, slash mum's bedroom as well. There's a lot more junk in here than there is in other rooms. DVD collection and that, clothes everywhere. Just chuck away, there's no need keeping it. Okay. Joy's bedroom got into such a bad condition that Christian moved her bed into the lounge where she now spends nearly all her time. It's not very nice, a lot of cobwebs around. Does mum want to come back in here? No, I think mum wants to stay where she is. Okay. And then we're going to turn this into a living room or maybe a room for my little girl when she's a bit older, when she stays oh, with nanny and things. Oh, yes. How long have you been here? 20 years. Oh, I was a year old when I came here, so I've lived here all my life. So yeah, yeah. that's why I want the flat done out of the way. And oh. it's, it's easy because I'm older now, so I need to move out and I don't want to leave mum in a crappy place to live in. Push down. Push. She's just a caring and loving woman, and she you knows she deserves the best, and I'm going to try and give her the best. But my main goal for the clean house is to paint it, to refurbish it and keep it that way. We'll be able to have family dinners around my house again, have Christmas around my house, have birthday dinners, and just enjoy it the way it should be, not having to worry about people coming in your home and it being a mess. Okay. Christian and his mum are vacating the flat for three days. One foot in front of the other, mum. One foot in front of the other. With them out of the way, Maxine and Jasmine can get stuck in, tackling the two decades' worth of dust and grime. <laughs> wow. wow! I get excited. Wash, wash up quite nicely, ready for painting. I'm just going. Whenever there's a child involved in a property that really, really is unpleasant, I find that, that as a parent, I find that really hard to deal with. And there has been times where we've come out of a job and cried. Yes. And we have cried. to compose ourselves before we go back in. Oh my God, I cry. Sometimes I totally bawl with a client. I literally, and, 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 and they're, they're hugging me. <laughs> in Kent. Ah, oh, we don't want to lose that. It's for a notepad. It's quite decorative. Oh, no, it's not. It's a cutting board. Something. Yvonne and Angela are struggling with a hoarder who refuses to let anything go. Right, John, here's a box for you to yes, wait. Yes, indeed. Uh, Shall I give you some flags? But after two long days, they've finally made some progress. Having seen the space in the lounge... It's amazing. John has come round to the idea of letting some items go. That's one nasty cooker. He's allowed Yvonne and Angela to ditch two cookers and a fridge freezer. Okay. Right, let's clean the bath. There is some grime on here, and it is coming off. I'm doing some polishing. Yay! <laughs> and after two days of hard work, they've almost finished the job. I like this bit. It's <laughs> getting somewhere. Before, you could hardly move in John's hall and living room. After limited success in discarding items, Yvonne and Angela have at least been able to give John some space to move around. Of course, the stair carpet's going. Previously, the bathroom was buried under half a ton of furniture and clutter. This is fantastic. Are you happy? I'm ecstatic. Happy you doesn't get in cover. and have a proper wash and yeah, a bath well, now, John. I've got a home now. That's amazing. What do I say? Thank you. You are Thank you absolutely so much. welcome, John. Uh, Our, look, look, we're walking down indeed. the hallway. Indeed. Three days ago, the kitchen was unusable, with every surface covered. Get in. No. Now it's a big improvement. Marvellous. Thank you. Although. Not perfect. Look at those windows. 
Oh my god! Can I clean the outside of the windows? You certainly can. The house is clean to that extent. It's worth the while cleaning the windows. It's an achievement. I've now something to work with and it's achievable. It is actually within my grasp to have my home back. It may not be the job Yvonne and Angela expected to do, but for John, it's a big step in the right direction. I'm appreciating the gain space indoors. Now, this is creating more. It's been holding me prisoner for years and it's gone. I don't have to step round it anymore. It's gone. We've only been able to touch at the surface, really, in our eyes. But in John's eyes, we've made a massive yeah, difference. And, and, and that's the thing here. And that's what we've had to look at it differently, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. It sounds corny, but I do actually feel joyful. I've got so much to do. I want to get to bed early tonight. I'm going to get up tomorrow and start work again. I've got so much to do. Bye, hey, John. Bye-bye, bye, John. The front door, that will Fantastic. Bye-bye. Thank John. you again. We felt at times, Ange, that we were making somebody feel threatened, but we've had to deal with a grown man's emotions here and, mm. and fears and anxiety and yeah. stress levels and all of them things, and we've done it. Get in. 